This week we make our way to horse country, North Texas. Get to visit a good friend of mine, Dale Hendricks, at Hendricks Reining. great to be here at Hendricks Reining with Dale Hendricks right in the middle of all these horses and, and to think it all started with the celebrity slide we did in Oklahoma City several years ago now uh, you know that brought me and you together sidekick Luke the young boy that was the the make-a-wish and uh, you know even even Jet that's still involved in reining today well when I got the call for the to be a part of the celebrity slide I was very excited um, the reining has been good to me it's I've traveled all over the world, been to Europe, uh, Australia, all over the world teaching people about reining and showing horses and everything. And so when I got the opportunity to help Luke and make his wish come true, um, it was a great opportunity. And then when you got thrown in the mix, it was a fun opportunity because I'd been playing with the buck and cattle and trying to raise a few bulls and you being the bull rider and raising some of them too, it was kind of an interesting combination for me to get paired up with you. And it, it actually was a great thing for me because I've made a lot of friends. And uh, Luke has come to the ranch a couple times and gotten to get on horses here at the ranch. And, and uh, he, he said after it was all over with that he's changed his wish that he wants in life. He wanted to ride reining horses. And so that was a real special thing for me. I grew up... Uh, team roping, round horses all my life, and then my dad kind of got into reining horses, and, and uh, he took me to a reining once, and I watched him, and I went, well, that looks easy, I think I'll do that. And so I kind of just jumped in full force, um, went out, bought me a two-year-old, actually it was a halter bred horse. I thought, you know, if they needed to stop, they needed a big hind end, so I went and bought a big old halter horse, two-year-old, started him. Ended up being a pretty good reining horse, but uh, then I went to college in Lamar, Colorado, and they have a horse training and management uh, course there. Met my wife and away we went. Well, the horse training world has been really good for me. I've, I've got to win the NRHA fraternity. Um, I've won almost every major event there is in reining. I also got to be on the gold medal team when we went to Aachen, Germany, and uh, I actually showed Starbucks sidekick there, the horse that you showed in the celebrity slide, and the half-brother to Wranglin and Checks. Um, I've been real lucky in this world. I mean, I've shown a lot of great horses. The all-time leading dam in the NRHA, Tari's Little Vintage. I showed her and managed her breeding career early in life. Won the fraternity on one of her sons. Um, it's been a special deal for me. You know, a reining horse, when you get on them, they actually feel a lot different than people think they do. Just watch them. They, they're fun to watch. But it's almost like stepping into a Ferrari and driving down the road as fast as you can and turning corners because they, they, they just handle so, so much better than a lot of horses. And for me personally, it's the most challenging thing I've ever done on a horse. It's uh, very hard to get them to do that day after day. Well, when I got the opportunity to go out on my own, um, it, it was a, a very quick decision that North Texas was where I wanted to go. I mean, basically because it's it's there's so many breeders and trainers here it's a little bit like shopping at Walmart you can go there and get everything you want and, and, and just because they come to Tim McQuay's place across the road then they can come to my place and see what I have where if I was out in the middle of nowhere they had to make a special trip just to see my horses um, but with everybody being here the great thing is then we have the best veterinarians we've got the best haulers, trailer people, I mean it's just kind of like a horse training mecca here and it just makes it easier to sell horses, to train horses, to um, trade horses. They're all right here. And so it was a very quick decision for me to come to North Texas or Southern Oklahoma. Well my program here is both a breeding and training facility and uh, what I 
plan on doing everything out of my mares as I put them in the legacy cell as yearlings every October. And uh, I hustle around trying to get people to, to buy them and bid on them that'll send them back to tr for me to train. Um, of course, I like those horses so I want to train them, but we also accept a lot of outside horses from clients all over the world and train their horses and show them and everything, but uh, I've tried to just build this facility and kind of a, a hit all aspects of the rain and horse world, where it's kind of a one-stop shop. What do you got in here, Dale? Well, this is our covered round pen where we start all the colts and we exercise a lot of the yearlings for the legacy sale. And if we got an older horse that's a little bit too fresh, we don't want to crawl on and get bucked off because I'm not, I'm not a bull rider, that's that you. The ground looks soft in here, I like it. It is. <laughs> I, I have hit the ground in here a time or two starting some colts. So this is Starlight's Wrangler. Is this uh, Wrangling in the Checks' as daddy? This is Wrangling in the Checks' as daddy. Um, this horse was sent to me in training when he was a four-year-old in 2001. And then in 2002 we won the National Reigning Breeders Classic on him. We then retired him to stud and we've been breeding mares with him ever since. And We've even been roping some steers on him here lately. <laughs> he can do it all. Huh? Yeah. As an individual, he's by Gray Starlight, who was a very special breeding horse, and he's out of a, a daughter of Doc Wrangler named Wranglers Connie, and she won the the uh, or she was a finalist at the Cutting Horse Association fraternity. And when I when I'm looking for a stud to stand, they've got to have the look, they've got to have the athletic ability, they've got to have something special, and they've got to have the show record. And this horse kind of had it all. And uh, I won a lot of stuff. And a lot of people have asked me that, you know, you've rode thousands and thousands of horses. If you just had to go grab one to go ride to enjoy, who would it be? And he is always that horse. He has something special that a lot of horses don't. He's really, really quiet, but yet he has a lot of feel in his face and his mouth, which makes him easier to ride. You don't have to you know, kick hard or anything. And to this day, I still have not come by another one that had that combination, that quiet and that much feel. We wish we could make copies of them, but I also think that would hold us back too because as they become individuals, they, they get that next special thing. It sets them off above anything else. He's a pretty special horse to me. Steve, as a professional bull rider, I never want to show up to an event that weekend and tell them I got hurt working one cow at the house. Uh, tell me a little bit about the, the tub situation and the, the safety, I guess, that is involved with that. Well, the nice thing about these tubs is everybody makes them. There's several different styles out there. Some, instead of having the sheeting like this one, are open bar. Uh, but this one, I really like. The nice thing about a tub is you bring those animals in and what it does is it gives you the ability to keep away from your animals as you're sweeping them in, getting them into your squeeze chute. The sheeting on these tubs, the nice thing about that is it, it actually keeps a distraction away from the animals. And by, by doing that, they move easier. They're, uh, they're smooth flowing into your alleyway. Well, you got a couple of bulls here or something we can, we can run in there and see what it works like? Yeah, let's go ahead and grab them. Yeah, sounds good. Once you get them into the tub, the real nice thing about this particular tub is as you notice, as this continues to slide in, it's spring-loaded, and each one of these spots here will keep them from backing up on you. There's been several people that have been injured from getting cattle into an a area this small and then pushing back on that gate. And with this, those animals, that's as far back as they can go. So again, safety is the key to all this equipment. No matter how much the, uh, the, the animal acts up, you've got them to a certain point. When you get them into the tub, you can just work them one step at a time until everything is rotated around and on into the alley you go. Exactly. Well, there's several different styles of uh, alleys out there. Some that are non-adjustable, which this one is adjustable. You can adjust the widths on it depending on the size of animals. This one also has a sheeting. 
You can have some that have open bars on the all the way down or sheeted all the way up, just like the uh, the tub here. So the, the sheeting really helps out, keep legs in, keep heads in, but uh, it, it really helps in keeping your animal single file, getting them into your squeeze chute from the tub. I see that even from the, the tub, if they get past here, you've got a butt bar to stop them, whether you're up there or you need to come back and push one up, it'll hold uh, all the bulls or cattle or whatever you're working in the alley. Yeah, just keep them from getting back into that tub in case you're bringing up some more. Uh, some cows, being that we're working bulls, if you're going to bring up some cows or something, you can keep them separated that way. So, of course, you see, look like you have horses everywhere, bridles, everything. How do you kind of, kind of keep track of, of what all's going on and, and what needs to be done throughout the day? Well, this is our list of training horses, and we, after we ride or turn them out or whatever we do with them, we mark them so we can keep track of, you know, if everything's getting ridden the way we want and everything, and then. If I see a problem, I can always go back and say, hey, did we miss a couple days here? Or do I need to, is this horse sore because I've been riding him six days a week and I need to be riding him three days a week? And it's just a way to keep track of it throughout the month. And then the first of the month, we start over and clear it off and go again. So you have uh, a couple other trainers that train under you. So is this kind of keep up, all of you on the same page on what needs to be done and uh, some catching up you need to do or, or to slack off on a, on a horse that's getting ready for a big show? Yeah, there, there's three of us that ride all these, and so it kind of keeps us together. I, I come up with a list for everybody to ride, and then about once a week I'll change that up a little bit, and I'll, I'll pull one horse off, and I'll maybe I'll ride him for a week and give them another one. And then it, this just keeps us organized. Every once in a while uh, I'll forget to put one on the list, and I'll walk in here, and there'll be a gap. <laughs> and I'll go, oops, hey, yeah, we need to get to work. One. This yeah. one is not getting work. So. Well, I mean, is, is it good to switch uh, riders on horses? I mean, because when you when you come to a show, uh, it might be a different different rider, uh, you know, performing the horse. So, is is it is it good to kind of alternate it some to let the know, the horse know it's not just this one person, this one cue? Yeah, I think it helps a lot to switch the riders up. I mean, for for a lot of different reasons. For what you said, it it gives that horse a different experience. Everybody rides a little bit different. It, it get, just gets them more finished if they get it exposed to different things but it also helps me I can feel what's going on but it's really helpful to me to see what's going on I see those other guys ride them around and I go "Ooh, I don't like that or "Ooh, I really like that and then I can adjust my training the next time I get on them with that so what do you got here Dale this is a two-year-old uh, by Starlight's Wrangler out of a Dunnett mare that we've kind of got some high hopes for um, I sold him to one of my clients from Arkansas named Dewana Cartiller, and uh, you know, right now he's feeling really special. So how many how many rides have you got on this colt? We've been riding him since about the first of January, so he's got pretty close to seven months of riding on him. As a two-year-old, he's kind of showing a lot of potential in the spin. I mean, he actually probably turns around as well as a lot of the three-year-olds I'm riding too. So it's just a real natural move for him. But he's also, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a big stopper. Um, he's, he's been very trainable. He, he knows he's a boy. He kind of acts like a teenage boy a little bit, but you know, they've kind of got to act like that and have that grit, you know, to compete. Uh, it's kind of like bull riders, you know, they, they got to <laughs> know they want to be good. <laughs> the interesting thing is though, is, you know, when I've ridden their sire and their dams and, and even some of their grandsires and dams, those little things come through. I mean, they, they, there's a lot of things that they all do. Yeah, like the Wrangler did the same thing. Yeah, Wrangler did the same thing. A lot of his colts have done the same thing. And there's lots of little things that they do that you, you recognize, the way they turn, the way they stop. And it, uh, it becomes kind of fun to compare them over time. See ya. How's it going? Hi, Jeff. Hi, Dale. Here, uh, I get to see your uh, your horse today. Dale's been training on. Absolutely. Look at him ride some horses. Go from there. I'm always here to take some notes. I usually bring my pad and pencil, but you got a good memory. <laughs> a photographic memory, pretty much. A lot of people on the on the ranch have this misconception that that show horses are just show horses and ranch horses are just ranch horses. And once I got a little better introduced to it and started realizing that. The things that these reining horses are doing, if I could get my ranch horses doing just a little tiny part of that, it'd make way better horses. 
And when Cord had the opportunity to be in the Celebrity Slide, he had told me about it and I said, well, if you're going up there, I want to go. And he got paired up with Dale Hendricks as his trainer in the Celebrity Slide. So I went up there and, and got to meet Dale and I come back to the stall after the raining and got to talking to Dale and um, told him I was really interested in raining and raining horses. And he said, well, if you ever want to come down and ride, just, just come down. And about two weeks later, I took him up on the offer and went down and got to ride some horses. And, and uh, Dale really introduced me to raining altogether. One of the things that got me really interested in wrangling in checks, um, when Dale called and told me about him, he said he's, he's out of the same mare that Sidekick was out of. And Sidekick was the horse that Cord got to ride at the Celebrity Slide. And of course, Dale has won everything there is to win on Sidekick. And uh, that really got me interested in the first place. And, you know, I, I didn't realize at the time how much history Dale had uh, with that family of horses. And, you know, obviously that, that breeding came out in him. And, and he was bred to be a good horse, and he ended up being a good horse. He's made the, made the finals at almost every event that we've had him entered in. He made the Futurity Finals and the Derby Finals and uh, several other events that we've taken him to. He, he's just been so solid everywhere we've had him. Um, and that's one of the things that makes him so good. He's just so consistent. And, you know, right now, he's, he, uh, I'm one of the, the top 20 owners in the NRHA, and it's all because of this horse. His uh, spin is probably his big maneuver, and I felt it. I mean, Jeff did a good job starting him because the first time I got on him and turned him around, I went, this, this horse has a lot of turnaround. And I mean, it's just so fluid feeling. It feels like you're on ball bearings going around and he just goes as fast as he can. But probably the spe most special thing about him is he's just got this great mind. I mean, he just, he's easy to get along with. He, he walks in the pen and he shows the same over and over again. I mean. He was very easy to train. I mean, I just think it was all a good start that Jet put on him. So in our training program, we try to ride him five days a week and give him two days of recovery. And uh, we found that it's real important to have that recovery time to, to help build muscle back up. It's just like a, a professional athlete playing football or basketball. You can't hammer on them every day. You've got, to, you've got to give those animals a chance to recover and, and they still have to have a life. We get a lot of turnout, they get out in the grass, it's good for their mind and everything. But we'll ride them about 45 minutes to an hour a day, sometimes a little longer depending on where they're at in their training. And we just try to keep it really as consistent as we can so they stay in really good physical shape so that when they're doing those maneuvers we can decrease our chance of injury as much as possible. It's just like when you're bull riding and you had to work out and stay in shape. That's the same thing we do with these reining horses. Well, when we're showing these horses, what we're trying to do as riders is we're trying to become invisible. We don't want the judge to be watching us. We want them to focus on our animal and everything. So, yes, it looks like we're, it's effortless and we're not doing anything, but that's, that goes back to that daily training and that little bit at a time to where you get that horse light enough and sharp enough that you don't have to drag your hand clear over here to get that maneuver done. You can just move it an inch and he's listening to you. And you run down there and just whisper, whoa, and stick your feet out. He stops, you know. It, it is just refining it to the point that you can get him to do those maneuvers with as least amount of pressure possible. So when I go to go fast, I'll lean forward. And even though he can't hear, I'm going to cluck to him because I'm used to that. The whole time we're doing this, we're trying to check to make sure they're guiding and they're light with their hands and they're going exactly where we tell them to go. When I come to the middle, I'm going to sit back and he just listens to my body so much, he just comes right back to me and I never pick my hand up. There's seven different, different components to a reining run, a stop, a rollback, spin, 
uh, circles, which circles is, is basically to see how well your horse steers, how well he guides. And all of those seven components, we, I use it every day if I'm working on the ranch or if I'm riding a roping horse or whatever. Okay, hey, that was a really pretty lead change except for the trot step. Make him lope on just a little bit more and just slowly use your leg. A little bit more. There you go. Great in the front, but you didn't get the back lead. Lay your leg. Lay your leg. Good. Well, I think my favorite maneuver is probably circles because there's so much. It's something you don't get a lot of points for, but it's so detailed and there's so many pieces of it. And you, you end up working about 80% of your time training reining horses working on that circle. And I'm kind of a freak about being able to go fast and slow.